everybody, welcome back. It's Deiru here. Today I'm gonna to show you how to build deck stairs on your own. And the easiest way to do that is to take a two by four and I have it clamped on the deck right here. And the first measurement you're gonna need, which is the most important, is called your total rise. And what that is, is quite simply the distance between the top of your deck to the bottom, to your ground or concrete pad. So you wanna take your tape measure, put it on your ground, and get the measurement to the bottom of the two by four here. That's gonna give you your total rise. Now, next, once you have that number, you wanna determine how many treads you need. Let's take a look at this template I have over here. And a tip for you, if you are new to building stairs, I absolutely think it's a great idea to do templates. Like grab a piece of OSB or plywood and template it first before you do your layout on your two by 12 because those are more expensive. It also gives you peace of mind. Now there's two words and terminologies that are really important when it comes to building stairs. The first is rise and that's that vertical measurement right here. The second is the run and that is where the treads sit right here. Now the rise or the ideal rise that we're looking for is seven inches. That's really the sweet spot for stair building. And for the run, it's around 10 inches minimum. Now it's so important that you consult your local building codes to find out the exact numbers and measurements for your area because they vary depending on where you live. So once you have your total rise, you wanna find out how many treads you're going to need. And the easiest way to get your measurements is to use an online deck stringer calculator to get your exact numbers. Once you have your numbers, you are ready to go. Let me grab the lumber and show you guys. This is what we're using today. And we're going with two by 12 material, pressure treated, of course, for the stringer. And that is really what you wanna work with because by the time you make all your cutouts for the stringer, it has to be two by 12. It's really windy, let's get up onto the deck now and do our cutouts before I get blown away. <laughs> okay. So now that I have my lumber here, in order to do the layout on our stringer, you're gonna wanna get yourself one of these. This is an essential tool. This is your framing square. Now you're gonna notice that this part is skinny. We call this the tongue. And this part is thicker. We call this the body or the blade. And I also have a set of stair gauges. These are about $11. They're awesome. I think it really simplifies building stairs. You can also use a clamp and a piece of lumber, but let's take this to our two by 12 now and we can lay out our stairs. So I have my framing square and my stair gauge and I'm looking to set this on my rise. So these are my numbers here and I'm gonna set it at six and a quarter. So I've had this framing square for a long time. It's rusted up a bit, but it works, right? So I'm gonna tighten that at six and three quarters. Yours will probably be over here a bit at seven. So there we have it, six and three quarters. That is my rise on, that, the, on the tongue, the thin part. I'm gonna go over here now and do the run, right? Minimum run is 10 inches. So I'm gonna have ours at just 10 and a quarter. Tighten that. So that there is our framing square with our stair gauges. And now we can take it to our two by 12 and test it out. So what I'd like to do at this point is I have my rise over here and I'm just gonna test it out. This is a two by 12. I'm just using the back side of my stringer and I'm just gonna trace this on my two by 12 here. And I'm using the outside here to trace instead of the inside. Some carpenters use the inside. I find when you're learning personally, it's easier to see it if it's on the outside. We're testing our rise here. So you wanna double check that your measurements are accurate. You've got the six and three quarters there or your seven inches for you guys at home. And then we will double check this measurement as well. And I'm looking for 10 and a quarter. There we go. So I got my framing square here. This is the end of my board. I've just cut it in half. This is gonna be a riser right here. So I'm gonna leave just a little bit of space there. And now we can lay out our stringer. So that is our run. 
and that's our rise. So that's our tread, and then we can just slide it over. And we're looking to match up those two points. So we have one tread here, another tread, and then we'll do one more here. Once you get to the end here, you can see we have one, two, three of the risers. This is gonna be the head of our stringer. So at this point, we're gonna take off the gauges. At this point, we're gonna flip it to 90 here. This is gonna be the top of our stringer. You will line up this, and we're creating a 90 here. So this is gonna be the top of our stringer. So we're gonna cut this out. Now if we look at the base, this is the bottom of our stringer. I'm just going to draw in my last riser here. So I'm gonna line it up in the corner and draw my last riser in. And flip it. And then I'm gonna cut it out. Make sure it's on the line there. So that's the top, where our deck is, where the header is, and then that is the bottom over there. And now we can cut it out. And to make my cuts, I'm gonna use, be using my skill saw to make my cuts. And for the corners, use your jigsaw or a hand saw, because you don't wanna overcut this. Really important, okay? Okay, so for these corners here, I'm just gonna use my jigsaw. Looking for nice clean cuts in the corners. That's what I wanna see. Taking a look at the stringer that I've just cut out, you're gonna notice the ground is here and this riser is shorter than the rest by five and a quarter inches. That is because I'm using pressure treated lumber. It's all gonna make sense as we do the install. You're also gonna notice here that I have made a mark in pencil and I'm gonna cut this out now on my jigsaw because this is how we're gonna secure our stringers to our concrete pad. Let's go do it. So that right there is what we're gonna cut out. You're looking at three and a half inches, one and a half inches. Okay, now that we have our notch, we can go install our stringers. Now, because we live in an area with a lot of wet weather, we are definitely going to be using joist tape. You use whatever you like, but this is self-sealing. So all of those screw holes that get driven into your stringers, these are gonna self-seal. It's gonna make your deck and your stringers last longer, which we like. It's also gonna protect you from rot and decay. Good things to keep in mind, especially with the rain that we have been having. Now to install it, I'm actually gonna be putting the joist tape along the backside of my stringer where it's gonna make contact with our hangers. We've got some really cool hangers going in. And you could just take your hand as simple as that, smooth it out. So at this point, you are now ready to map out your stringer layout here on your ledger or your rim joist. I'm gonna mark out 16 inch centers. You wanna line up your level and mark that out. 16 inch centers, a reminder, if you're doing composite, you're probably gonna be wanting to look at 12 inch centers for your layout. So off of there, every 16 inches, Mark it out, and that is where we're gonna have our joist hangers. This right here is one of the most critical steps when building a deck, and it's your adjustable stringer hanger. You definitely wanna use one of these to attach your stringers to your deck. Now, like the name says, it's adjustable. Grab your stringer, this is the back side, and grab the side that has all the holes on it. Now, this is actually important. A lot of people miss this step. Place it on your stringer. This is adjustable depending on the slope of your staircase of your stairs and bend it. See that? Once you have it bent, you can now install it on your rim joist. And don't forget, really important, these right here are the screws that you need. These are the number nines and I'm using an inch and a half. 
It's really important anytime you're using a hanger, you want to use the hanger and it's going to tell you exactly what fasteners you need and it has to be the exact same metal. So let's install it now on our ledger. Okay, and because you guys can't see very well, now on the underside, you wanna definitely make sure, manufacturer says you have to hit up a screw second from the bottom, okay? Make sure you have a screw second from the bottom. As each stringer goes in, you do wanna check that you are installing them perfectly level, right? So now that I have my stringers in place, we can move on to our masonry anchors. We wanna make sure that the two by four at the base of our stringers are nice and secure to your concrete pad. And with these, they're not gonna go anywhere. So before installing our sleeve anchor, I wanna use some angle brackets to secure them to the two by four. You can also beef it up with more angle brackets on each and every stringer. That's gonna take care of that uplift, the wind that gets under your stairs in severe weather and lifts it up. This will keep it down on the ground where we want it. Something critical I forgot to mention, when your stringers are going in before you install the angle brackets, make sure they are going in nice and straight. You can check that by using a laser level. Be sure to do that. Now, once you have all of your stringers nice and secure, we can go on to our masonry anchor. Don't forget, set your drill to the hammer setting. And it's important to go down a quarter inch more than the depth of your masonry anchor. Showtime with your anchor. There you go. Once you've driven it in, handy old crescent wrench, tighten as you go. And definitely have a couple of these. I'd put definitely two. And if you have a bigger set of stairs, you can always throw some more in. So at this point, grab your deck boards. I have two per run and I have a spacer, a 1 16th spacer along the middle for drainage and also for air. And I have a carpenter square. Grab your carpenter square and I'm lining up my stairs with my fascia. We want a nice straight line. Let's get started on the install. Don't forget, when you cut your lumber, you want end grain sealer. I still have to do that. And don't forget your nosing. Check your code book and double check that you have your proper allowance for your overhang here for your nosing. So to secure your deck boards, what I like to do, line up your stringer. That's where my screw holes are going. And I'm using these types of screws. This is from a hidden fastener system that I use on my other decking videos. I'm gonna show you what this looks like at the end. It's pretty cool. And to install it, you need a star drive bit. That's a star drive bit. And you can get those out of the way. Let's see what we got here. All right, that is nice. Can you see that? Mark it, screw it, repeat. Now I've installed already my top tread, my riser, my second tread and then riser. So I'm really just working from my top down. And then I have a bit of a shadow gap here for drainage. It's actually common too to install your risers first. So just install it whichever way works best for your installation. This is just what's working for me. I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna face screw into my risers now. To take good care of your stairs and deck, you definitely want to stain it and I don't recommend sanding. I will link to that video, no sanding, in our playlist all on deck building. And this is really an intermediate project, so if you want something really simple, the best way to build a deck, if you're a beginner, is this one right here. It's absolutely the easiest way I know. Check it out and please tell me what you think in the comments. I'll see you in the next one, everyone. Thanks so much.